I went to uh, University of Maryland, that's where I did my graduate work, bumped around to a couple think tanks in DC and, and really was not fulfilled in the sense that uh, I wanted to see sort of the direct impact on uh, people and policy, right? I began my work with the state of Maryland, uh, Maryland Department of Labor. Uh, really, my job was getting people jobs. Um, and I managed a couple grants for them. Uh, one of them was the BRAC grant. Uh, it's the uh, Base Realignment and Closure Grant. Uh, Maryland, again, was fortunate enough to see an influx of about 40,000 jobs uh, come into Maryland as a result of this base realignment. Uh, many of those jobs actually were cyber jobs. And so we were faced with a challenge in the state of Maryland. How do we train folks to take these jobs that are coming without people attached to them? Uh, so that's where I began my work in the cyber world. Um, really looking at how we can train sort of incumbent workers, uh, dislocated workers, folks that have been unemployed for these jobs. So one of the biggest challenges I think for students uh, beginning to enter into the cyber industry is uh, the ability to obtain security clearances. Much of the work that's done in the cyber industry is done in the cleared space. Uh, unfortunately, at community colleges, we cannot issue clearances nor conduct background checks. However, we do offer a non-credit course uh, that's called Security Clearance Awareness Training, which allows our students to really understand the background uh, investigation process, uh, sort of how they need to conduct themselves both now and in the future if they want to obtain clearances, and how to fill out the required federal forms uh, to sort of expedite that process as well. So we do want to see more students into the pipeline, and we do want to make sure that they are understanding the requirements and uh, necessary to get clearances so they can really position themselves for these high demand, high growth jobs. One of the key provisions of the grant was this notion of sustainability, right? Um, we didn't want it to just be for the period of performance. We really saw this as a way to build a capacity across the community college system in Maryland. Uh, so some of the achievements are uh, really developing local business ecosystems amongst the 14 community colleges. Because what we wanted them to do was to really have uh, partnerships that were available after the grant period. So all of our 14 schools uh, convened their own uh, local business advisory groups so that when the grant's over, they still maintain those relationships. And when companies are hiring, they can go straight to the community college and really get uh, a first cut at sort of the top talent that is graduating from those institutions. We also have cyber labs that the community colleges have built, which will be maintained after the grant period. And it really does allow the students that hands-on experience that is so needed when you're entering those entry-level jobs. And two, uh, many of these schools are applying for what's called a CAE 2Y designation. Basically, it's a designation from the NSA and Department of Homeland Security that really gives that good housekeeping seal of approval on their programs of study so that the students uh, that graduate know that they're developing the skills needed to actually get those entry-level jobs at an organization like the NSA or DHS. And furthermore, this has really sort of uh, improved the way that community colleges communicate. Uh, we have a subcommittee of faculty uh, across the cyber programs to really share best practices about how to teach certain subjects and really sort of where they're seeing the uh, impact in their classrooms are uh, and how they can improve the, how they teach these subjects. We are always looking for new partnerships uh, amongst our private industry folks uh, to help us sustain these programs. We're really looking to sort of broaden, I guess, how we reach out. Uh, to the student population. Because I mentioned before, we have about 20,000 job postings per month. Even if we enrolled every community college student in cyber programs, uh, we still need a way to figure out how to maintain that pipeline. So one of the things that we're doing is actually reaching out younger and younger uh, to students that are interested in the cyber field to make sure that they understand that community colleges are the place to get this type of training. Uh, for instance, tomorrow we're actually hosting a Montgomery County Public School cyber competition at Montgomery College we're expected to have about 200 high school students participating in a cyber forensics competition. Because once the students come to the community colleges, we can get them into the cyber programs, but we need to sort of uh, expand this message out to the high school and even middle school students to let them understand that the cyber industry is a growing field and it's vital to uh, just how we conduct business in our everyday lives and really get them uh, energized about this subject. Our relationship with Maryland Tech Council is one that we see as being vital to the success of this uh, grant in the sense that Maryland Tech Council really does have a, a relationship with hundreds of companies that we would otherwise not uh, be able to sort of uh, reach out to in the sense of getting to the key folks within those industries that make the hiring decisions. So what they've done is they've helped us convene a couple of business advisory group meetings uh, where they've brought the CEOs as well as the hiring managers that are making those decisions so that we can really hear directly from the source as to those skills that the students need. And two, they've also been helping us populate the virtual internship platform with opportunities for our students 
uh, so that the students can really have uh, access to these exclusive internship opportunities that folks outside the program um, would not have.